Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. How does NCBA work for you? We'll show you some of the ways from Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. to the Beef Culinary Center in Denver and much, much more. And now a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. We're glad to have you with us. This time around, we're going to bring you a special look at some of the programs, the activities, and the people of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the nation's largest cattle industry organization, representing cattlemen and women in every state. And with offices in Denver and Washington, D.C., the NCBA staff works every day on behalf of the beef cattle industry. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association traces its roots back to 1898. That's 115 years ago when cattlemen first saw the need to cowboy up to work on common issues, problems, and opportunities for the good of the entire cattle industry. With 64 state affiliates and a strong growing membership, NCBA represents a total of more than 230,000 cattle breeders, producers, and feeders. When we ask cattlemen and women why they value NCBA, one of the most common answers is because of the work done on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Every day, the NCBA staff is working on the policy issues that matter to cattle producing families. We learn more about the people who carry out those efforts from Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter. You might not guess by seeing him in Washington, D.C., but Colin Woodall grew up in Texas cattle country. Now he spends long days working the phones and on Capitol Hill, advocating on issues that impact America's cattlemen. Those of us on staff at NCBA, we work the hill every day, call it burning boot leather on Capitol Hill. And it's our job to go in and have relationships with members of Congress and their staff. Every vote, every bill, every piece of legislation that comes out of D.C. has an impact on your operation back home. And the only way to affect that is to come and get engaged and make sure that your member of Congress knows where you stand. That is the real value of why they belong to NCBA, is that representation and that boot leather that we burn on Capitol Hill each and every day as a staff, that's what's most important to them and the value of their membership. NCBA's Washington office is located right on Pennsylvania Avenue, and from here, Colin and his colleagues keep an eye on anything Congress and the federal government might do that impacts NCBA members and the beef cattle industry. Washington, D.C. rarely sleeps. Uh, Congress is in session year-round. Uh, the administration is always in place, and they are always working on rules, regulations, or potential laws that are going to impact our members. So you can't just show up once or twice a year and expect to have a great impact on the process. The NCBA Washington office is staffed by a group of professionals, many with cattle backgrounds, and together they have the skill to tackle any issue from animal health to trade, environmental regulations to tax issues. They press for the interests of cattlemen and head off legislation or regulations that could negatively affect NCBA members. People are aware that we have the staff here, full-time staff, offices. We are engaging with representatives, House of Representatives, Senate agency people on a day-to-day -day basis. And they know more and more that they need that back here to carry out their cattle businesses. That's why NCBA has a staff of 15 in place in Washington, D.C. year-round. And it's our job to make sure that we're working each and every day and continuing to build the relationships with these members of Congress and ultimately know that every time they cast a vote, we're watching. And we're going to judge them accordingly and make sure that when they go to the floor to vote on a bill, that they're thinking about the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and all the cattle producers back home. In Washington, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. And joining us now to talk more about the work of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association is Kendall Frazier. He's the Chief Operating Officer for NCBA. Kendall, thanks for coming to the show. I'm glad to be here, Kevin. Well, let's begin by giving folks a brief history of NCBA and more importantly, how has the organization grown to be the largest grassroots organization representing cattle producers? Kevin, NCBA was established in 1898. So we have a long history. We have 28,000 members. 
Hmm. We have 45 affiliates at the state level who are members of NCBA, and they represent about another 140,000 affiliate members. So we're the largest grassroots organization representing the cattle industry in the United States. And specifically, the organization works on policy. Tell folks, how do they get involved in these policy issues? To get involved in policy, it really starts at the grassroots at the state affiliate level or the State Cattlemen's Association. If you wanted to advance policy forward through the NCBA process, you would start with your State Cattlemen's Association, get that policy passed there, and then that State Cattlemen's Association would bring that to NCBA, the appropriate policy committee, mm -hmm. and ultimately it would be adopted by our board of directors. Now, you've had a number of policy victories over the year, and you've seen a number of them. What would you count as the biggest victories for NCBA? Well, I've got three. Uh, about a year ago, we were successful in keeping the exemptions for the death tax at $5 million for singles and $10 million for spouses. That was a big victory for us at the end of last year when Congress was working on the tax code. Number two, through all the disruptions and talk about the budget, stop starts in Washington, D.C., we've been able to maintain meat inspection in packing and processing plants across the United States. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's extremely important to us mm -hmm. because our members market cattle and we keep that market going. Number three, working with the U.S. government, we are able to have the Japanese increase their age restriction from 20 months of age to 30 months of age, which opened up more beef exports to Japan. So those are three big victories in the last few months. Now this mar month marks the, what, 10th year anniversary of the cow that stole Christmas. And you were there that day it was announced. Tell folks what it was like to be at NCBA on that day, and more importantly, what role did NCBA play in that, in, in that issue? We got the call at NCBA at 3.30 Eastern time that a cow, a dairy cow in Washington state, had been diagnosed and tested positive for mad cow disease or BSE. This is something we'd been planning for for a long time as we had watched BSE go across Europe and primarily in England. So we had a plan in place. We immediately updated our talking points, our key message points. We conducted a series of conference calls and immediately started doing interviews. In fact, in the first few hours after the case was announced, we did over 100 interviews with media. Mm. Our message was that U.S. beef is safe and that we've taken adequate steps through the years to protect the U.S. beef supply. It was a big effort on the part of NCBA and our state partners to speak with one voice mm. and to support the government with the message that U.S. beef is safe. And, and tell us this, what do you think were some of the key lessons of that experience? And more importantly, what has NCBA done to, to prepare itself and the industry in the event of a, another situation like that? The key lesson, Kevin, was that working with the government, we were able to develop a comprehensive plan to deal with the first case of BSE. So we, would, we had done some uh, training. We were really prepared and ready to go. As we look into the future, we've worked on some issues out there like foot and mouth disease, what would we do, what kind of plan do we have if we have ever have a case of foot and mouth disease in the United States. So those are the kind of things that we work on every single day. So we're, you have to be prepared to deal with these big issues when they come at you. Very good. Thank you so much, Kendall, for all you've done all these years for NCBA and beef cattle producers. Thank you, Kevin. From freedom to operate to tax policy and much more, why not join the fight as NCBA works on the issues that matter to you? To become a member, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit our website, that's beefusa.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I really truly feel like we are a, a great um, support for and voice for beef. We'll see what's cooking at the Beef Culinary Center in Denver. Plus. We'll learn how NCBA is working in the area of sustainability for the long-term benefit of the U.S. cattle industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. If you've been waiting for the right time to get the John Deere gear you've always wanted, then now's the time to get down to the Green Fever sales event. 
The hottest savings of the year are ready and waiting on compact and utility tractors, hay tools, and select lawn tractors, too. Visit your John Deere dealer at johndeere.com slash greenfever to learn more about all the great incentives, like 0% financing for 60 months on compact and select utility tractors. While you're online, enter the Big Gear giveaway for a chance to take home your share of $30,000 in John Deere gear. Hi everybody, this is Marty Stewart inviting you to follow me to Nashville, Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It'll be February the 4th through the 7th in Music City, USA. For more information, please visit the National Cattlemen's Beef Association website at beefusa.org. There you can check out all the cool stuff that'll be happening at this year's convention. Now, while you're at it, don't forget to check out the Marty Stewart Show, Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on RFD TV and Family Day. Welcome back. One of the close allies of NCBA is the Public Lands Council, or PLC. The members of the Public Lands Council work together to protect the interests of producers who operate on public lands. We learn more about how the PLC is making a difference from Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz. PLC is an organization that represents uh, public land ranchers in the 13 western public land states and they are primarily represent some nearly 50 percent of the sheep and lamb production in the United States and some 25 percent of the beef cattle. Each and every year, members of the Public Lands Council take to Capitol Hill to work with members of Congress about the issues that are impacting those that use federal or public lands as part of their ranching and grazing operation. We are here advocating for the public lands industry, for the grazing industry, um, that we produce food and fiber for the nation. And we are here to talk about some of the issues that affect our businesses, our rural communities, and the natural resources at home. It's absolutely important that members come to Capitol Hill and talk to uh, members of Congress. Our members being up here, they can tell their story like no one else. We represent them as staff up here on a day-to-day -day basis, but every time that they come into town, they're noticed on Capitol Hill, and their members of Congress want to see them here, telling them about the issues that they face on their daily operations and why it's so important to have that congressional support to allow them to continue carrying on the tradition of ranching in the West and across the country. It's the investment in that tradition that drives members of the Public Lands Council to make the journey to our nation's capital to educate others about issues that impact them most. Many of their concerns deal with protecting the environment and wildlife, but PLC members say regulations like the Endangered Species Act and the National Environmental Policy Act too often put undue burdens on today's farmers and ranchers. Some of the main issues are things like ESA, the Endangered Species Act, the NEPA, some of the rules and regulations that we face, and then also the fact that we're trying to educate some on what we do with, with the public lands and how it's tied to base property and supports the rural e economies and the western communities. One thing, we, you know, the rules and regulations uh, uh, continue to go on, it's just getting harder and harder to operate on public lands, and so we're just trying to make it so we can make a living and keep on the land. The Public Lands Council also says it's key that both members of Congress and the American public understand the important role ranchers play in managing and caring for the vast lands of the western United States. Federal lands benefit from the management provided by those ranchers that are out there. Ranchers are on the federal lands, our nation's lands, every day managing their livestock when federal bureaucrats are there maybe once a month or every few months to check on the status of those lands. So it's, it's highly important, very beneficial for the taxpayers of America for our members to be out there managing those lands on their behalf. And it's beneficial for America's cattlemen and women to speak up in numbers. The Public Lands Council and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association work hand in hand to represent the best interests of the beef cattle industry to the U.S. government. It's something you can help with. PLC and NCBA work together day in and day out up here on Capitol Hill and really through our members being 
uh, engaged in both organizations. Many of the PLC members are also members of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and enjoy uh, being part of both organizations and uh, working to better the industry on behalf of all ranchers across the United States. Public Lands Council works hand in hand with NCBA on federal lands issues and other issues that affect the cattle industry because all of the industry is intertwined, so we work very well hand in hand. Reporting from Washington, D.C., I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. NCBA isn't just a policy organization, it's also a contractor to the Beef Checkoff Program and subject to a number of restrictions about how those funds are used. Joining us to tell us a little bit more about some of those restrictions and specifically the firewalls that have been put in place over the last several years is Kendall Frazier. Kendall, tell us a little bit about those firewalls we speak of. Well, two very important notes. Number one, with new contract as an organization with the Beef Promotion Operating Committee, you cannot make a profit. You cannot use those funds to lobby. And we're very serious about that. So all our checkoff dollars that we contract with the operating committee to use, are, we, we are directed at marketing programs. The beef is what's for dinner campaign. Working with dietitians and doctors and physicians. We also have a compliance officer that reviews our timesheets. Every NCBA employee keeps timesheets. We review our invoices every month. And all that is validated by both the Cattlemen's Beef Board, and we also have independent auditors that come in and validate that. You mentioned the, the Beef Fits What's for Dinner campaign. Tell us about some of the major program areas uh, where you're doing work for the Beef Checkoff. We have an extensive marketing team that uh, we call it an integrated communications team mm. that is marketing beef to consumers, and we're shifting our strategy a little bit towards a lot more social media activity in that area. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of work that we do with influencers uh, from farm to fork. Influencers who advise people and consumers about food choices. Mm -hmm. And that can be anyone from a dietitian to a chef mm -hmm. to talk about our product and how our product's produced. You know, um, I would be interested, what do you perceive to be some of the key challenges, particularly from a consumer landscape standpoint for the beef industry in the years ahead? We have a whole new generation of millennials who don't know how to cook beef, mm. they don't know a lot about it, and we have a lot of education work to do with them. In addition to that, as I said, those people in our society who recommend food choices to consumers, mm. chefs, doctors, dietitians, are asking a lot more questions about how we produce beef. Mm -hmm. And we've put together strategies to reach them and explain it, because we've got a great story to tell in our industry. From beef marketing to freedom to operate issues, why not join the fight as NCBA works on the issues that matter to you? To become a member, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit our website, that's beefusa.org. Sustainability is a word you may have been hearing more frequently over the past few years. In fact, sustainability has been front and center for much of agriculture. And it's an area where the beef industry has worked to be on the leading edge with coordinated research and communication efforts aimed at measuring and improving beef sustainability. We learn about the results of these efforts from Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter. The beef industry sustainability assessment is the largest um, sustainability assessment that's ever been conducted along a food value chain in agriculture. So it's an assessment that starts with the birth of the animal on farm and then goes all the way through consumption of the product and even into waste disposal or landfills. The beef industry has actually improved its overall sustainability by 5% in six years. And if you were to look only at the environmental sustainability, it's improved 7%. So really tremendous improvements in a very short amount of time. The beef industry should be commended for all of their hard work. A path of continuous improvement is critical for the beef community. The global population is expected to grow to 9 billion by the year 2050. That growth will require the production of 60% more food using fewer resources. Identifying improvements that allow the industry to produce more with less will be critical to meeting growing demand for beef. Our number one improvements really lie within innovations and improvements in efficiencies. 
And the biggest ones that we have are improvements in crop yields and precision farming and that technology that's happening on farm. Efficiencies and improved efficiencies in animal performance also play a huge role um, on farm. And then off farm, we look at things like biogas recovery from packing plants where additional energy is captured um, that we haven't utilized before and we're able then to power approximately 60% um, of the energy of our packing facilities um, by recovered energy. The Beef Checkoff Program funded the assessment in order to provide science-based answers to questions about how changes over time contribute to industry sustainability. The work benchmarks progress between the 1970s, 2005, and 2011, while also providing a roadmap for a more sustainable beef industry in the future. When we talk about leading the sustainability conversation, what that means in our role as the checkoff and as NCBA for the beef industry is that, that when they have a question about beef sustainability, they don't call anybody else but us. We want those phone calls to come, come through our industry. We want to answer those questions about beef sustainability ourselves. And this project has not just earned us a seat at the table, but it's earned us a leadership role um, at that table. I think that the checkoff is to be commended for the quality of work that they've done and the funding that they've been able to put forth to this effort. A one-size-fits-all approach to beef production practices is not an option for the beef industry. The sustainability assessment is an effort to proactively identify the practices that contribute most to industry sustainability. Anything that improves efficiency is going to improve the sustainability of our operations. So anywhere from improving calving rates to improving crop yields on farm, um, that's all going to contribute to Im improving the environmental, social, and um, economic aspects of sustainability. There are a number of ways to improve beef sustainability and even consumers have a role to play. The largest opportunity is actually to reduce food waste um, at the retail and consumer level. So approximately 40 percent of all food is wasted by the American family and that equates to approximately $2,500 a year in actual costs, economic costs, um, to Americans. So if we could decrease food waste of beef by half it would actually improve our sustainability an additional 10 percent. Funding this study gave beef producers a seat at the table that we wouldn't have been able to have before. When I go and speak to audiences that aren't pro-beef, they're shocked that we've seen an improvement in six years, especially the amount of improvement that we've seen. So I think it really positions us to begin to tell um, perhaps the most positive and proactive beef story that we ever have um, had the opportunity to do. Reporting from Denver, Colorado, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You can find out more about the beef sustainability efforts by visiting our website at cattlemen to cattlemen.org. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Its arrival is as routine as the truck that brings the next load of calves. You stand ready, waiting, watching for symptoms. A revolutionary new weapon in hand. Unique chemistry and hard-hitting active ingredient. Longer duration in the respiratory tract. Rapid absorption. Join the Zuprevolution. Zuprevo, Tilda Pearson. See your veterinarian. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me today. Join me today. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Earlier, we shared with you some of the daily work of the NCBA staff in Washington. Also critical is the presence of cattlemen and women themselves calling on senators and congressmen from their home states and pressing for the action on the issues that can make or break a cattle producing family's livelihood. That's why each year the NCBA legislative conference is so important. More on that from Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Matt Fleck. 
Each year, hundreds of cattle producers from across the country travel to Washington, D.C. to make sure their voices are heard by decision makers in our nation's capital. Attendees of NCBA's legislative conference get a chance to meet with elected officials and discuss the hottest issues affecting the cattle industry. The spring legislative conference here in Washington, D.C. is all about cattle men and cattle women from across the country really come into Capitol Hill to engage with lawmakers and really to be able to tell their story of what's important to them and why that really matters to the business environment that they want back home. It brings our, our producers from the grassroots level to Washington, D.C. We endeavor to get them to go and talk face to face with their uh, representatives so that they have an opportunity to express their opinions. I think that it's critical that, that our decision makers understand that we're engaged, that our farmers from one end of North Carolina to the other are cognizant of what's going on in Congress. The Legislative Conference is sponsored by Elanco and gives cattle men and women an opportunity to share their personal stories of life on the ranch with members of Congress. The lawmakers and their staff welcome this chance to hear how their decisions impact ranchers nationwide. We work for the folks back home and when they make uh, the time and expend the effort to come to Washington to make a case for something. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to hear what folks on the ground are thinking and uh, what they need. Our delegation has been very receptive of, of those visits and, and uh, not that we would agree on, on all issues by any means, but uh, they've been very receptive to hear our opinion and ours of theirs. We're glad they're here uh, and it makes a real difference. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've relied personally on a story that someone shared with me uh, in a speech I've given or in an issue we're facing because I can remember uh, a good story someone told me about the challenges they're facing. The great part about our legislative conference is that for weeks after we're done, we will see members of Congress and their staff in the hall and they'll say, hey, I saw your guys when they were in town. They, we saw the cowboy hats. They know that the cattle producers are in town. They know that NCBA is in town. And that is a great image to leave these members of Congress with. So it has a huge impact. Meeting with elected officials is just one part of the event. Many attendees also visit the federal agencies responsible for regulating how ranchers do business on a daily basis. We also take time to meet with agency representatives uh, from all the agencies that affect the beef cattle, but especially USDA, Department of Interior, and let them know how their policies and their staff back in the states uh, can function better to, uh, to help us with our businesses. It helps them understand the agencies. The agencies see the producers, that they're actually influencing and having an impact on their lives. And it makes a more personal touch. A strong showing of producers in Washington, D.C. is vital to the success of the cattle industry. It's critical that lawmakers and regulators hear firsthand how their decisions can impact the bottom line of the nation's cattlemen. It's so easy when we're at home to um, just kind of get locked in our own world and think that you know we control our destiny in this. and. And that's not the case at all, and I think you realize that when you're here. Bringing the message here to the halls of Congress, I think, is critically important to what goes on uh, on the farm every day. And I think when we leave, they've heard us, and I think that's important. Reporting from Washington, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. And with us again is NCBA's Chief Operating Officer, Kendall Frazier. Kendall, NCBA has done work on behalf of the beef industry for a number of years to enhance and support beef demand. What would you consider some of the biggest achievements? Well, number one, uh, the continuation building of the Beef It's What's For Dinner brand. It's highly recognized by consumers and it's a great brand for our product. Number two, the development of the value cuts from the chuck, underutilized uh, cut in the carcass and uh, things like the flat iron steak, uh, have added a lot of value to the beef carcass and ultimately the beef animal. And then number three, the research that we've done in nutrition. Uh, a lot of nutrition research that we've conducted on, on behalf of cattlemen all over the country using checkoff dollars to tell the story about the nutritional benefits of our product. And we've used that research to do that with a lot of dietitians, physicians, people out there in the influencer community. When I was over at your office, I saw the incredible remodeling work you've done in the Culinary Center. Tell folks a little bit about that project and maybe more specifically, how does that help drive beef demand? Well, in the last year, we doubled the size of our Culinary Center. We have a complete test kitchen and we do a lot of recipe development and testing in our Culinary Center. It's very important. Number two, we bring in a lot of food companies that market beef 
and work with them on new product development. So it's a really important part of our marketing strategy, using those checkoff dollars. Thanks for your insights and your leadership, Kendall. Well, thank you, Kevin. For more information, just log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. If you've ever seen some of the outstanding recipes on the Beef It's What's For Dinner website, you might wonder how they're developed and tested. The answer is found at the Beef Culinary Center in Denver, Colorado. More on the outstanding work of the newly expanded Culinary Center from Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Sharon Alseth. A recent expansion doubled the size of the test kitchen at NCBA's Denver office. Now, the culinary innovations team not only has more space, but also up-to-date equipment to test and perfect a wide variety of beef recipes. We recently went through and actually changed out one of our former executive boardrooms and opened it up, as you can see behind me, into our testing kitchen. So we've been able to expand what was three testing ranges into now four pods. So our testing development area can now um, go into full swing and, and test a lot more recipes in less time. What we look at is actually what is most popular in the consumer's household. So we're looking to test on all the, all the recipes on those ranges so that we can minimize the amount of error that the consumer might have based on what range they're using. Um, so that we can hopefully give them the best eating experience with beef. Recipe testing and development ensures that all the beef recipes on beefitswhatsfordinner.com are delicious and easy to make for beef consumers at home. The culinary team also develops recipes to provide resources, such as the Confident Cooking with Beef brochure. Full of information on choosing, storing, and preparing beef, this tool for consumers covers all things beef. Confident Cooking with Beef is a really great uh, tool, I like to call it the, the beef bible. It has everything from how to shop for beef, how to store beef, and then every um, cooking method, so it really is a guide for the consumers to be able to um, have a successful um, beef eating experience. And so, you know, I think it's very important for us to continue to be able to test recipes and develop recipes. Um, this facility is wonderful in the fact that uh, we're able to take the time to be able to expand and test a recipe more than once. I really truly feel like we are a, a great support for and voice for beef. Um, what we do is try to help and educate as much as possible um, and, and get beef on the tables. From the Beef Culinary Center in Denver, Colorado, I'm Sharon Alseth for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Coming up, Shanoa French from the Beef Culinary Center will be here and we'll cook up some beef for the holidays. Don't go away, we'll be right back. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. I'm Scott George, President of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, inviting you to follow me to Tennessee. We'll be right here in Nashville doing important work, having some fun and fellowship in historic places like the Grand Old Opry. So make your plans to join us in Nashville February 4th through the 7th, 2014. We'll see you there.
We're back in the kitchen with Shanoa French from the Culinary Innovations team. And Shanoa, holidays are approaching, and you're bringing us a recipe, I understand, that uses beef in a wonderful new appetizer. It is. It's it's actually our play on um, cranberries and, and holiday stuffing. Sure. So in, in an appetizer format, you can serve at any type of party you want. Um, the great thing about this is we're going to actually talk about something that's kind of on trend right now is, is the custom grinds. Oh. So that's where we're going to start. A lot of people have their favorite cut of meat, okay. and um, they want to be able to use it in different ways. It's not mm. something that you have a ribeye steak that you can only put on the grill. So what we're going to do is we've created a custom blend, um, wow. a meat blend, and we're going to make just traditional meatballs after we've done that. Very good. So our blend is, um, it's a little bit of brisket, okay. a little bit of ground beef, yes. and a little bit of ribeye. So wow. a little bit of that extra fat flavor for you. And All I'm going to go together. ahead, yeah, mix together. I'm going to throw gloves on okay. just so we can work through this, but at home you don't need to. Yeah, I um, have to admit I've not done any of my own custom grinds, but interesting concept. Yeah, and so if you walk into the grocery store, into your meat counter, and you can tell them, you can ask for them to grind this for you. Sure. Um, this recipe is kind of a small amount, so they might not want to do that for you. Okay. But you can do it at home in a food processor or, or a Cuisinart. Most people have these at home. So sure. we're going to dump this meat in here. The most important thing with this is that to make sure that your pieces mm -hmm. are all about the same size to start with. Okay. Um, I know sometimes when you go into the grocery store, you can get a coarse grind or a chili grind sure. or a fine grind. Yes. And making sure that your pieces are all about the same time or size, size. to start with will kind of help make that process okay. happen. Yeah. So last little guys are our ribeyes. And about how much total are you uh, This using? is a pound. A pound total. So, so, yeah, and we're going to end up making 24 little meatballs, mm. and so they are the appetizer three or four sure. to a piece. So, like I said, just stick them in there. The Perfect. trick to this is going to be your pulse button. Okay. So, um, make sure everything's locked in. Mm -hmm. You're just going to pulse it. Oh, wow. And it's going to slowly... <laughs> got to wrestle to the ground, don't you? Stick them on the counter, and you're going to pulse them until it goes to the grind that you want. And you wow. notice it kind of has to grab them a different size. Yes. But once you've got them all, all ground in there, wow. you're just going to take your lid off. And you can kind of move them around if they're sure. setting on the blade where they need to. And you oh, can see that they're kind of mixing. I'm going to do it one quick more little time. Okay. Make sure we really get this going in That's here. That's amazing. I've, I've never done that. Whoa. Ooh. We got locked up Not here. Not sure what I did here. That's all right. Um, Hit a piece we'll of bone down. or something no, on. No. There's no bone in there. Yeah. So you always um, fillet the ribeyes before you put exactly. them in the Cuisinart. That's always good. So um, <laughs> we're gonna show you how you mix the rest of these meatballs together sure. from that. But if you continue to um, use the pulse button, it. yep. it'll grow, and you can see there's tiny little pieces in here. Right. Um, and that'll give you a different bite in the size of your meatball. Really? Yeah. So the more that you process it all the way down and it gets smoother in there, the bite will be much softer. And you leave them a little bit bigger, you'll have a more um, a chew to your meatball. Oh, interesting. So that's the one thing to think about. Yeah. So what we're going to do, and the nice thing about having a big bowl here is then we can just mix directly in, in okay. this bowl. Sure. So standard meatball recipe, which is really simple. Um, a little bit of garlic. So okay. you're going to start with crushed garlic. If you don't want to use fresh, you can go ahead and use powder or granulated. Okay. That'll go in there. Yes. Um, a little bit of pepper. Pepper, absolutely. Let's tack that in there. Good. This calls for one egg. I went ahead and, and beat it before we put it in here, but you sure. can add it. Um, again, we've talked about before is that you don't want to overmix sometimes. Okay. So if that's why I usually mix it up ahead of time. Sure. And then it's a little bit of water. Oh. You can't see that in there, but there's, there's three right. tablespoons of water in there. Okay. And then what makes this some of our mini Mary yes. is, is that you're going to take your standard um, stuffing mix. Oh, really? So a prepackaged stuffing mix. A lot of people use these around the holidays. Sure. Uh, mix a couple different things into them. And that is going to be kind of your binder or oh, your breadcrumbs that you would normally add sure. into meatball brings mix. Brings a se separate flavor yeah. itself, too. Yeah, and it really brings that smell of the sage without yeah. having to add another oh, bunch of ingredients. So then you would just basically take mm -hmm. this, mix it in with your hands. Yes. And the thing is, is you're going to make 24. Most of the time when you're making meatballs, you make them a little bit bigger. Yes. But I like to say that these should be about the size of a large gumball. Wow. Okay. So you want, you need 24 out of a pound, which sure. is bigger than normal. So you get all these and you put them on a baking sheet like normal, bake them in the oven for 16 to 20 minutes so they're nice and golden brown, 160 degrees internally. And then you're going to serve them over here. Wow. And, and as we talked about the holiday, bringing that theme in, the sauce that's in the middle there is a, it's a homemade cranberry barbecue sauce. I wondered what was making it so red. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's whole fresh cranberries. Okay. And you're adding a normal barbecue sauce ingredients. It's ketchup, molasses, yeah, brown sugar, a little bit of water. 
some onions, and you're gonna put it on the stove in a stock pot mm -hmm. and let it cook and simmer down for about 20 minutes. And then the trick too to get that real nice sh shine to it and mm -hmm. real smooth texture is you're gonna run it through a blender. Oh. So, and the trick is is that you wanna use why it's still warm, mm -hmm. so it'll process through a little bit easier. Wow. Um, but you'll run it through a blender, and then you can serve the meatballs and, and cranberry barbecue sauce together. What a unique way to utilize beef in an appetizer with a lot of the ingredients you're already going to have at, uh, at, at holiday time. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing this idea to us. For this and other outstanding recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com, or you can go to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. The new Speed Rower Series self-propelled wind rowers are smart for the way you cut hay or swath grain. The Speed Rower gives you superior luxury with the Comfort Ride cab and patented rear axle suspension. Combine this with New Holland's IntelliSteer auto guidance system to maximize operator ease and efficiency. Looking for more speed? New Holland's new high-speed transport option gives you road speeds up to 24 miles an hour, so you spend less time on the road and more time cutting crop. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all of the benefits available to cattle producers. Hi everybody, this is Marty Stewart inviting you to the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show right here in Nashville, Tennessee. It'll be February the 4th through the 7th. For more information, please visit BeefUSA.org. See you there. Each year, one of the outstanding educational opportunities for cattlemen and women is Cattlemen's College, now in its 21st year. And joining us to tell us more about this year's edition is Dr. John Patterson. He's the Executive Director of Producer Education for NCBA. JP, let's begin by talking target audience. Who should attend Cattlemen's College? Ranchers, farmers, uh, young and old. If you're interested in finding out from the nation's experts about beef cattle, you got to come to this one. This may be the largest uh, cattlemen's uh, uh, program in the nation. We expect about 1,200 people will come to that. Now, I understand you've recently changed the format. You've broadened it to be a two-day event. Tell us a little bit about what you've added. That's right. Now, remember, we're going to advance it. So this starts on February the 3rd, which is a Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. And we want to have three hands-on demonstrations with live animals. We're going to talk first about, hey, I'm working around a squeeze chute. How do I keep from getting hurt, both the animal and myself, from hurt Dr. Arn Anderson from Texas? Mm -hmm. Second one is, Kevin, we have got to increase this cow herd. And so Dr. Jerry Lipsy is going to come talk about selecting the ideal replacement heifer in terms of fertility and longevity. And Jerry is a real expert at that. And then finally, that was the female side. What about the male side? Dr. Kent Anderson from Zoetis is going to talk about bull selection. What should you look for in a bull? How does that meet your criteria for your ranch? And he'll use both visual appraisal as well as DNA assisted markers. Are there any other highlights producers should know about this year? Well, one of the, the suggestions for Cattlemen's this year was, tell us how to transfer the ranch from this generation to the next generation. Jolene Brown is coming in, and her title of her talk is, Stop Fighting on the Way to the Funeral Parlor. <laughs> and so she'll bring the paperwork, she'll give you a start on how to transfer the property. And so that, that's going to be really exciting one. One of the other, uh, and I love to have ranchers talk to other ranchers, and so we've got a panel discussion of the smartest things that our ranch ever did to be able to transfer it from one generation to the other. Wow. And so we've got representatives from Texas and Montana are, are going to come, and, fl and Florida will be there to say these are the smartest things we've done. In fact, one ranch has been in the family, I think, since about the 1870s. How did wow. you guys do that? Uh, one of the real fun ones is going to be people always want to know about the product. Tell us about the steaks. Dr. Phil Bass, Bridget Wasser, Steve Wald are going to actually cut up the meat, so utilization of the product, mm -hmm. and then Steve Wald is going to cook the product. So if you want to taste some of the new products, you got to go to that, that class, and that'll be uh, uh, tra uh, periods two and three, and that'll be, a, that'll be just a lot of fun. Hope to talk about sustainability is okay. there as well. Stalker cattle, uh, health. 
you know, as a, as a cowman myself, we're always asking the question, well, should I use modified live or kill vaccines? It's just there is no one answer. Dr. Arne Anderson is going to come in and say, under these circumstances, this is what I'd recommend. That will be a good program. You know, speaking about consumers and products, you also have a very unique speaker as a keynote speaker. Tell folks about him. Well, Mr. Bob Langert, Senior Vice President of McDonald's, one of our largest customers for our product, is going to come in and talk about global beef needs. Okay, and This is going to be exciting because think of the opportunities we've got if we want to sell product to, say, China. Yeah. As, a, as a Big Mac there. He's going to talk about what they see in, in the future, and I, we're really looking forward to his talk. First talk right out of the bat should be at 7.15 in the morning on, on February the 4th. Mm -hmm. you got to be there and, and listen to what he's going to say about the future of beef cattle. Well, I would agree. It's a must-attend event. Thanks so much for coming and telling us about it. You're more than welcome. Glad to be here. Don't miss Cattlemen's College in Nashville, Tennessee next February. It's part of the Cattle Industry Convention and Trade Show in Nashville. That's February 4th through the 7th. We hope to see you there. Find out more at BeefUSA.org. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out BeefUSA.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. Seventy percent of consumers want to know where their food comes from and how can we ignore them? IMI Global offers third-party audited source and age verification essential for export markets and specialty markets like natural, organic, omnivorous, Eskimo, or possibly recovering vegan certified. For quality and age producers, to the big boys, any cattleman who wants to expand his market, you're not just buying this green ear tag, you're buying peace of mind. IMIGlobal.com Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores. The unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. There's a hundred years of history, and a hundred before that, all gathered into thinking going on beneath his hat. And back behind his eyeballs and pumping through his veins is the ghost of every cowboy that ever held the reins. Freckles Brown might pull his bull rope. Casey Tibbs might jerk the flank. Bill Pickett might be hazing when he starts to turn the crank, plus Remington and Russell looking down his buckhorn sight all watching through the window of this cowboy's eyes tonight. And standing in the catch pen or in chute number nine is the offspring of a mountain that's come down from olden time. A volcano waiting quiet till they climb up on his back, rumbling like the engine of a freight train on the track. A cross between a sheep bear and a bad four-wheel drive with the fury of an eagle when it makes a power die of a snake who's lost his caution or a badger gone berserk. He's a screaming, stomping, clawing, rabid, mad dog piece of work. And his partner in this madness that the cowboys call a game is a ton of bucking thunder bent on proving why he came. But the cowboy never wavers. 
He intends to do his best, and of that widowmaker, he expects of him no less. And when you get down to the cutting, and the leather touches hide, and there's nothing left to think about, he nods and says, outside. And frozen for an instant against that open gate is history turned to flesh and blood, a warrior incarnate. And while they pose like statues in that flicker of an eye, there's something almost sacred. And you can see it if you try. It's guts and love and glory. One mortal's chance at fame. His legacy is rodeo. And cowboy is his name. Turn him out. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. It's always good to get your perspective. We'll be right back. Join producers from around the country at the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. It's an event that, that we will never miss. I love seeing the enthusiasm. I think it's great. It's perfect combination and the perfect time to hold the NCBA convention. Join your fellow cattlemen for the latest cattle industry news, education, networking, and fun. Plus, at the NCBA Trade Show, get the latest in industry technology for the cattle business. This trade show is one of the best trade shows that is out there. It's amazing the amount of industry and businesses that come here to be a part in. And there's no other place that for those of us as beef producers can go to have this much information in one place. So follow me to Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, February 4th through the 7th. Learn more at beefusa.org. Hello, I'm Kevin Ochsner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlemen cattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. As we head towards the middle of December, we're counting down the days until the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It will feature Cattlemen's College plus great speakers, an outstanding NCBA Trade Show, and world-class entertainment in Music City. So be sure to mark your calendar for February 4th through the 7th at the Opryland Hotel in Nashville. And you can register right now at beefusa.org. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.